Um, hi, everyone. My name is David Perry. I'm an engineer with the Wies Institute at Harvard University. I work in Connor Walsh's lab where we build soft, wearable robotics. Uh, and when we strap those soft, wearable robotics to your legs, we call them exosuits. Um, so there's uh, two main applications for the exosuits, or as I like to call them, the robot pants. One is for healthy people. You put those on, and it's going to enhance your natural mobility, help you do things you would normally do a little bit easier. Uh, and for people who have suffered some kind of physical impairment, it's going to restore some of the mobility that they might have lost. Uh, we're going to concentrate today mostly on the first application, uh, look at using these exosuits on people that are already healthy. So I got one slide here. There we go. Uh, so this guy's tired. Um, and he's got every right to be tired, because we often ask our dismounted soldiers to carry over 100 pounds of gear. Um, they're carrying around some armor, some weapons, some supplies. I don't really know what they carry, but it's a lot of stuff. Um, and they get really tired after they're carting it around for miles at a time. Uh, now when you get tired and you're walking, you're more likely to injure yourself. You're going to twist an ankle, uh, twist a knee. And when you get to wherever you're going, you're going to be less able to do your job at 100%. Um, so this is something that DARPA has been pretty concerned with. And so they started the Warrior Web program. And they're looking to reduce the effort that it takes for a soldier to carry a load and hopefully help prevent some of the injuries that they see while they're carrying that load. So we've been working on this for a few years. Uh, we've gone through a number of different iterations of the suits. Uh, and our lead controls developer, Nikos, is wearing the latest iteration of the suit right now. So I'm going to ask him to come out on the stage. There he is. So the first thing you'll notice about an exosuit, as opposed to an exoskeleton, is there's no big rigid components strapped around the legs. We've taken all of the heavy things and put them up here, if you want to turn. Up here, we have all the motors, the gears, the electronics, all of that kind of stuff. And on the legs, all we have are soft textile components, some sensors, some anchors for cables. Um, so your legs aren't going to feel weighed down. You'll be able to move around like you normally would. It just feels like you're wearing a pair of compression pants. You can squat, you can kneel, you can jump around, do all the motions that you normally would if you're wearing a normal pair of pants. And the way that we're going to be assisting him as he walks, if you want to start doing a couple laps, we're pulling around the hip, uh, the hip joint there, we're pulling with a cable. And around the ankle joint down here, we're pulling with another cable. And those are pulling in parallel with the major muscle groups in his legs, giving him some extra propulsion to move forwards. We're pulling with something like 25% of the force that he would normally use uh, moving around on his own. And we're watching those motions, watching him walk with some sensors that are all up and down his legs. So the machine isn't telling Nikos what to do. Nikos is telling the machine what to do. It's watching for how he's moving, how his gait is changing, how quickly he's moving, uh, if he's walking up a hill, if he's walking down a hill. And it's also looking to see if he's trying to step over something. Can he do like a quick pivot? Like if you run into danger, like, ugh. Like <laughs> it seems like you're doing some pretty quick. OK, got it. Yeah. OK. So OK, LeBron. It's going to give him support when he needs it, but when he needs to move around and take a quick pivot, move away from danger, it's not going to get in his way. It stays transparent. So now, what are the... Sorry, go you got a question? Yeah, no, it was more of a snarky joke. Snarky, okay, all right. We can fit it in later, maybe. So one, one of the big challenges with these suits, actually, is getting the apparel design correctly. Uh, you see Nikos is clearly one body shape. Uh, we've tested these on a lot of soldiers, and they are a very different body shape uh, than anyone in our lab. Uh, and we're doing our suits for <laughs> we're doing our suits for people with disabilities. That's a whole entirely different kind of body shape. Uh, so we have a number of functional apparel designers in our lab, uh, and they've put together a pretty sleek system for us. Um, also, the controls development, being able to look at and differentiate what kind of terrain he's walking over, uh, is a huge task because there's a very fine line between helping you walk and really getting in your way and, and really kind of pissing you off. Um, so our systems need to be robust because this isn't a case where we've made a one-off that we're babying in the lab to get some data out of. Uh, we've actually been strapping these on a lot of soldiers over the years. If you want to play video one, that'll explain it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we've got a close partnership with Natick Labs up here, as well as the Army Research Labs down at the Aberdeen Proving Ground. Uh, and they've been helping provide soldiers to give really important feedback on the system, what they like about it, what they don't like about it. Just in the past few months, I think since May, we've had soldiers down there put over 230 miles on our systems. 
Uh, and that's on a treadmill and, and on the, the sidewalk and that kind of stuff for sure, but most of the path is through the woods. They're going over logs, going over roots, all sorts of really difficult terrain to differentiate for a system, which is why it's important for it to work so robustly. How long does this last? How long does what last? The battery, the battery or whatever is powering it? Uh, I mean... we, had, we had a few guys go 12 miles, and we would stop them every three miles to, to swap out a battery. So three miles. Three miles. OK. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean it, depends how big a, it depends how big of a battery we're going to stick in there. We can go 12 miles straight, but it's kind of a big battery. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And how much does that battery on the back of him weigh? Uh, a couple of pounds. The battery is sitting right up here. So uh, this pack is empty, uh, and this little bulge at the top here, this is the battery hanging out right at the top right there. Got it. Yeah. So uh, down at the labs, we uh, test the robustness of the system and how people respond to it. But we're also looking at uh, their metabolic output, how much it's costing them to carry a load. Uh, and we've seen really consistently um, it is taking less energy to carry a load with the suit on uh, than it takes to carry the load without the suit on, which is good, because that's kind of the point. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely good. Yeah. That's great news. Yeah. So we're also looking to apply this technology to people that have uh, some kind of physical impediment. Uh, we don't have a demo here for that, but we've got another video. If we can play that video. Number two, there we go. We've partnered with Rewalk Robotics. Um, they've already built an exoskeleton for people with spinal cord injury, and they're, go they're going to help us commercialize a system that rehabilitates people that have had a stroke. Um, so in this case, they've lost mobility in one of their legs. Um, they're not able to pick their toes up in order to clear the ground, so they might trip themselves. And they're also not able to really push off very effectively to give them mobility going forwards. Uh, and that's what our system is able to do there. It just straps around the calf, and it's picking up the toe to help with ground clearance, and it's also pushing off to help propel them forwards. Um, so it's a little bit of force here and there. It makes a huge difference in restoring their mobility, helping them be able to get around and navigate their environment. So as you are building these things for both, it sounds like soldiers slash healthy people, and then those with impediments or disabilities, uh, what is a more, I, I hate to phrase it this way, because either way I sound awful, but what's a more lucrative business? Uh, I don't know. I'm just an engineer. I don't know what the more lucrative uh, business is, but I think uh, for me, it seems like there is a lot of value that can be provided to someone with a disability with a fairly inexpensive system. It just takes a little bit of force on the toe, a little bit of force on the ankle, and that makes a difference between someone being able to clear the threshold of a door or not, or being able to get down a set of stairs or not. And so for a pretty relatively inexpensive system, uh, we can have someone who may have been stuck at home sitting on a chair, and they might be able to get out and engage with their community now and stay active longer. So it seems like a pretty valuable proposition. Can you give us a general idea of the cost? I know you obviously don't have these priced out individually for the consumer market, yep. and I'm sure you don't want us to tell us tell us the cost of making one, but yeah. can you give us a range? Uh, it's still pretty early in the research stage, so I'm not, I'm not going to speculate so on no. range of price. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> and then in terms of scaling it out, because I was talking to you backstage and begged and begged and begged to wear this uh -huh, uh -huh. and heard no <laughs> many times. Yep, for sure. And part of it was because they're sized for body types and you have a bunch of them made for guys and not for girls. Yep. So I'm just curious about scaling it out. If you're talking about people with impediments, that's even more of a broad range yeah. of body types and, and you know, formations or configurations. So what, how do you scale something like this? I mean, that's uh, Danny sitting in the front row right there. That's her job. Um, so she's her a functional problem. apparel designer. That's just a, an apparel design problem. She's got to design the right sizes for the right people. Um, but there's also a huge challenge there as well um, in designing the apparel components. Um, we're trying to transmit a lot of force, but we don't have rigid components there. So trying to get something that stays stiff, um, can transmit those torques, but also stay comfortable is a, a pretty pretty large task that we've dealt well, with. Well, and eventually, like, the look, right? I mean, he looks pretty cool right now, but you've sure. got an army backpack on, so, yeah. like, yeah. that yeah. helps. But, like, <laughs> you know, and whatever's happening with these shoes, I yeah. swear we're going to see on a runway. But yeah. um, It's nice. nice to, that's Coyote Brown. It's yeah, on the rage it's right now. very nice. Yeah, it's really good. But, like, for people who are actually just, like, wanting some chill-looking pants, yeah. that's not going to work. Well, so that's actually, I mean, that's kind of the, the benefit of these, right? This is still you know, somewhat early stages, but the vision for this down the road is that you can have something that's providing support, providing that force, but ultimately we can have it fit beneath your clothes. It's not too much of a jump to go from this, tuck in some of these cables, tuck in some of the, you know, things that are hanging out to the side. You can get a, 
uh, a nice pair of pants over that. And that's the idea down the road, is to be able to help people in their daily lives, but not be a big sign that says, I need this device to get around. Well, and there's plenty of jobs, right, that not just like military jobs, but like construction or other kind of like heavy lifting mm -hmm. jobs could probably benefit a lot from this. For sure. Okay, you've got like zero seconds to make some closing statements. Great. So I'll, I'll make that 20 if you'd like. Uh, I've already said everything I came here to say. It was a great conversation here. We hit yeah, all the key points. Yeah, a lot points. of back and forth. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. the prequel to Iron Man, by sure the way. Sure thing. Okay.